Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate it so very much. Today is all perfumes that I want to smell in 2021. Maybe purchase them, but for some of them, definitely get some decants or join a subscription service. I'm actually looking into that this weekend. Um, I'm going to do at least one, maybe try a couple of them out. And if that's something you're interested in, let me know um, which ones you've tried or like which ones you want to see me try. Because uh, I think that would be something really interesting this year. I should say welcome. My name is Aiden. I do talk about perfume here on Fragrance Fridays, but I also do all different types of beauty related content. So if that is something that's interesting to you, please do consider subscribing. It would mean so very much to me. Also, if you haven't been following me on Instagram, please go and check that out. There is a link down below um, also on my page. And I've been doing scent of the day. I've been taking photos of what I've been wearing and kind of just giving you a hint about the notes and stuff. So do follow me there as well. All right, let's get right into the list. So the first one on my list is Jean-Paul Gaultier Scandal and all of the flingers because I haven't smelled any of them and I, they all look really interesting and they're so cute with the little legs. I'm gonna be putting, putting photos right up here so you should be able to see them. I just, I think they're so cute. And one of them, I think it's Scandal at Night is supposed to be a cherry fragrance and I really love cherry fragrances. So that's one that I really want to get. Okay, I just plugged in my microphone because I realized it wasn't on. And also the bird, if you hear the annoying bird that's screeching, I'm sorry. All right, so one of them is supposed to have a cherry note in it and they just sound really nice. They sound something that I would like and I also collect for bottles. So that's something that really appeals to me. Along that same house is Jean-Paul Gaultier Labelle. It's been probably one of the most hyped up fragrances on YouTube this past year, even Instagram. And I really want to smell it. It sounds like, like something I would like, but then others have said that it's really heavy on vetiver and I'm not really a big vetiver fan. So I'm not sure that is one that I really want to try though in 2021. All right. The next one is probably, it's, it's going to be the most expensive one. It is going to be the only like expensive one. Most of these are going to be pretty moderately priced because I don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on a perfume. I just, I don't have that lifestyle. I don't have that type of money. And um, with my life, I don't know what's happening. Like I'm, yeah as everybody is right now. So this is one though that I have a sister fragrance to and it's the most expensive fragrance in my collection. So you probably already figured it out. It is Tom Ford Bitter Peach. And I love Lost Cherry. It's one of my favorite fragrances, but it was so expensive and it took like a long time for me to get it. And I had to get it with lots of sales and I got a decant before, but the price of decant seems to have really skyrocketed this year. I think more people are trying to do blind buys and not being able to go to stores. So like the amount that I paid for my decant, it's like double that at easily now for Bitter Peach. So I'm hoping that a subscription service or something will have it. I love peach and peaches and cherries are related. They're both droops, the stone fruits. And those are like my favorite fruits. So I really want to try it. It sounds really good, but then some people say the peach doesn't last very long. So I, I just, I really want to smell it. That's probably my number one smell, like the fragrance that I want to smell the most is that one. Then just come, they've just come out and that is the Marc Jacobs daisy line, but it's the spring flankers. So every year they do flankers. I have the entire collection going back to 2012 when they did um, shine and I just not shine. Whatever. I can't, my brain is not working right now, but I do have them all the way back. I have all of them. I have kiss blush sorbet, whatever. And I have all of them. This year I've noticed that they do not have Daisy Dream as a flanker. They don't have that as, it's called Spring, that's the line. So I think it's interesting that they've kind of replaced Daisy Dream with Daisy Love. I think Daisy Love is a superior fragrance, at least to me, like it's one that I reach for more. But there is Daisy, Daisy Oh So Fresh, and Daisy Love, and all in the spring. So those are definitely on my list of ones that I'm gonna smell. I'm gonna purchase them eventually. I don't know if I'm gonna purchase them right away because they do tend to go on sale and I've been seeing so many of the other ones. Like even May, June, they started going 
on sale at discount sites. So I think I might try to hold out just a little bit because they are so expensive and whenever I can save a little bit, I want to do that. Um, but let me know your thoughts. Next up is one that technically I already own, but I, I don't have it yet, and that is Mugler Angel Nova. And I heard so much about this, and it was one that I really wanted to get, but it was not available in the United States for the longest time. It just barely, like around Christmas, became available, and I still had a 25% off coupon that Mugler had sent me, so I used my 25% off coupon and, um, yeah, I'm excited. I don't like the original Angel. It is not a scent for me. It doesn't work with my body chemistry, but I do like some of the flankers that are, the, the mix is just a little bit different so that it doesn't turn funky on my skin. So I do like Eau Corsair, uh, 2019 is my favorite, but I also have the 2020, I have Fruity Fair. I think that's it. I want to try the EDT, the 2019 EDT eventually as well, but Mugler doesn't always release all of their fragrances in the United States or sometimes not ever. So yeah, that's one I want to smell. Uh, I'm excited for that to come. I don't know when I'm going to actually get it because of shipping and everything, but that is one that is on its way. Then the next one is Gisdor by Dior and it's the Innisfee. I'm probably butchering that and I really apologize. But that one I really want to smell because I love J'adore. It is a beautiful fragrance. It's one that lasts a really long time and there's just certain times where I just want that really fragrant, beautiful, bright floral. It's not like a heavy or overpowering or powdery. It's just really beautiful. So I want to try this one because I've heard really good things about it. I don't have any of the flankers. I just barely got J'adore last December. November, December time period. So I've only had it about a year and I really love it. It's one that I do like and I do find myself reaching for. So I wanna try that flanker as well. All right, next up is Killian and Killian in general. And I'm not talking like the, um, my kind of love, which are more affordable and I do own some of those. I'm talking the really expensive ones. I want to get, I'm hoping that they're in a some type of subscription service so that I can smell some of them or maybe purchase a rollerball, although they're like, or the purse sprays, they're so expensive. They're still like $50 for a purse spray, which is a good $20 more than almost every other one there is out there. So at least that are sold on Sephora and stuff. I really want, I'm really interested in Good Girl Gone Bad. That sounds interesting, but I think it might be too florally for me. I'm not really sure. Somebody told me that it smells kind of like a good, um, by like, Nirvana White by Elizabeth Janes. And I didn't like that fragrance when I smelled it. I mean, that's been a few years, so who knows? Tastes change. They do change. But yeah, I don't, so kind of want to smell that one. Love Don't Be Shy is the one that I want to smell the absolute most. But then there's like Black, Black Phantom and Memento Mori and um, Vouli Vous Coucher Assessois. And part of that is because, you know, Lady Marmalade and I, I just, I think it's hilarious that there's this perfume and it sounds good. Like the notes sound good. Then with Killian, I want to finish my, my kind of love collection. I have three of them. You haven't seen one of them yet, but I want to get the rest of them. So I do have boys. It's not my favorite princess. I absolutely love, I think it's delicious. It's a marshmallow fragrance. It's just so lovely and sweet and comforting and Oh, I love that one. And then I just got, spoiler, After Sunset. I haven't really worn it, but it's coming in a haul. You'll probably see it in February, judging by my filming like calendar right now, my release calendar. But it is coming. Maybe it will come up in January. I don't remember, but you will see it soon. Don't worry, and I'll be talking about it. But I want to get the other ones, which is like adults. And then there's a couple more that are harder to find. And I just, I want the whole collection. I don't even care if they're... If they're all me at this point, I just, the completionist in me is like, I want all the little balls. They're so cute. Going back to Dior, the next one I have is one that I've had on my list before and it's, it's kind of keeping on my wish list and that's Dior Joy. I've tried Dior Joy Intense and it's not quite for me. I didn't really like it as much as what I've smelled when I've been in store with Dior Joy. So that's one that I want to pick up 
that's one that I probably will actually purchase, fingers crossed, this year. I went to buy it earlier this year, but then I ended up getting Chanel Gabrielle Essence because I just, it was so good. Then we have Estee Lauder Modern Muse La Rouge Gloss because that is a cherry one and it's a cherry vinyl note, which I'm kind of intrigued by, but that's the one I really want because I love cherries and I have Modern Muse Chic and I have uh, Modern, Muse, Modern Muse La Rouge, but it's the gloss. I think that's the one that I want because it's the more sweet version. Okay, next one is Dior Addict. I should have put all my Dior's together, but I obviously didn't. So Dior Addict is an older fragrance. I do have a small decant that I got when I made another Dior purchase, actually that Dior J'adore, and I like it, but I want I want a bottle, and there's the Eau Froche. I can't even talk right now. That one sounds really interesting too. Oh, my notes, just ignore my notes. So that's those are two other ones that I'm interested in smelling and actually wearing because I haven't worn the Addict yet. But And I've heard that the older version is better. So if I could ever find that, that would be really good too. Then we have two from Floral Street. I do have Electric Rhubarb and a roller ball or purse spray and I really like that one I think it's really interesting and yeah I just really like that one but there also is Wonderland Peony which sounds really nice Suki or Soki London Suki I'm not talking true blood anyway she's talked about it and that's her, I think she said her favorite from the line and it sounds really nice and Alice in Wonderland is one of my favorite things so I kind of want it for the name anyway. And then r Neon Rose, because I love roses, and if it's a bright rose, if it doesn't just smell like rose, which I felt like Miss Dior, Roses and Roses just smells like plain rose, it didn't really call to me, but I'm hoping that Neon Rose is a bit brighter because of the name. Then we have two from Seven Virtues. These are both newer perfume companies that are at, at Sephora, and I think they're both clean, if I remember right. Don't quote me on that, though. They have one that's called Grapefruit Lime, and that just sounds right up my alley because a couple of my favorite fragrances from the past, not the, not 2020, but from 2019, were Atelier Key Lime. I love that one. It is so good. And then also the Mugler Angel Eau Croiser, and that's very much grapefruit to me. So to combine those two, I think would make a really delicious, mouthwatering citrus, and I just, that sounds really delicious, and I wanna try that one. I've also heard really good things about Vanilla Woods, and I do love Vanilla Scents. So that is the other one from uh, The Seven Virtues. I can't even talk right now, I can't think. There's, I have like this whole list right here. Seven Virtues, Vanilla Woods. That one sounds really good. I love vanilla. I'm not so sure about the woody part. If it's more vanilla than woods, then we'll probably be good. But if the woods are too strong, then I probably won't uh, work for me because woods sometimes make give me a headache. So we'll see how that goes. Then we have Escada Candy Love, which is another one that Soki London talked about. And it's so cute. It's this little heart. Oh my gosh. I love the bottle. And it sounds like a, just kind of a sickly sweet yummy fragrance and sometimes those that's just what I want and I just want something bright and sweet like the Escadas. I have some lovely Escadas that I just really love and this bottle is just so darling it looks like a little conversation heart so hopefully I can get my hands on that one as well then there's a new one from Atelier that just came out like last week the end of or maybe it came out middle of December. It's very recent though, and that is another Atelier Cologne, and it is Lemon Island. Now this one I'm a little more trepidatious about because one, it's lemon, and sometimes lemon can smell too sharp to me or too cleaner-ish, so I'm not sure quite yet if I will like it or not. It's definitely one that I want to get a sample of. It's not one that I would buy, blind buy. I wouldn't buy, blind buy really any of the Atelier. I would smell all of them. I did talk about them in my advent calendars on Instagram, so you can go and look at all of the fragrances that I tried and the ones that I immediately was like, nope, nope, and then some that are a little bit, that I need to test out a little bit more as well. <sighs> The end of this list is going to be 
a lot. These are all Zara perfumes and I don't, I know some people in the United States have Zara's by them, so it's probably easier to return and stuff, but I'm a little hesitant because of all of that and I really hate, I'm not an online shopper and when I am, it needs to be a really nicely laid out, easy to navigate site. Like Sephora, I feel like has a great website. Ulta is pretty good, but some of them, like I've looked on Zara and it's so frustrating to me because it pops up a little bit at a time and there's not an organization and the search function is not very good. It doesn't bring up it in a way that's easy to navigate and quickly to look for things it takes too much time. And that's not the type of shopping experience that I want when I'm online. If I'm in store, I want to wander and look around and smell, but that's not what I do online. So I've looked at Zara, but I'm like, wow, this is a pain in the butt to try to navigate. Anyway, I've heard Delicious Delights talk about a couple of these and they, well, actually I've heard her talk, I think about all of these. And I'm really, I really want to smell some of these. And I'm probably like all of these are ones that I want to purchase. I did just get two from Josh Jane, which are coming up in another haul. And I'm so excited to get them. And I, on first sniff really fast when I open the package, I think that the other two on this list are going to be really good. So the first two, I don't even know if they're available in the States or if they're only in Europe, but it's cherry watermelon ice. I mean, how can you go wrong? That sounds delicious. It sounds mouthwatering. It makes me want to go like get a watermelon cherry popsicle and just, mm, this sounds so good. Then the next one is rose marshmallow candy. Also marshmallow. I've already mentioned marshmallow in this video, how I really like it. It sounds really good. And then I do like rose. So that just sounds like a nice combination. And it's one that I just am really interested in trying. Now, these last two are like destinations or memories. I can't remember exactly what they're called, but I have the other two that Josh sent me. So this, the ones I really want are Mochi, Mochi Atelier in Tokyo because it sounds delicious. It sounds so good. And then sweet pastry in Paris and they're all kind of go together. That one I'm a little bit more nervous about because pastry scents, if they are too artificial smelling like Bath and Body Works, they make me feel nauseated. Like I smell them and I'm like, I just like my stomach kind of bubbles up. It's weird, but I really don't like that. But I'm hoping that in a perfume form that it won't be quite that same. I just, they sound so nice and I want them all because of, of like, they're so cute, the bottles and just what they represent. So those are them. And then the last one on here is from their collaboration with Joe Malone and that's Joe's rhubarb. I love rhubarb. I love that tartness. I like eating rhubarb too. Not like raw, but you know, strawberry rhubarb, whatever you want to cook it with. Um, it's really good. I love the smell, like what I have that has rhubarb in it, I really do tend to like as well. So I think that would be a really good one. And of all the Joes that I've heard of, that sounds like the one that's the closest to like my style and what I would like. Let me know what perfumes you want to smell or which ones you are planning to purchase in the year 2021. I hope that your year has started off all right. Um, it's, I mean, we're in the middle of, a lot of turmoil everywhere in the world. So hopefully you are safe and you are well, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.